Shalom, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. The name of the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is Yahweh, Bahasham, in the name of of Yahweh Shai, the name of the only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting with the elect Bahasham, in the name of Rachakwadash, the Holy Spirit that has been sent from on high, so that we, the true believers, in these latter days, could come back to the Most High through the sacrifice made by Yahweh Shai, who sits on the right hand side of the Most High and acts as intercessor and high priest and he sends down gifts in the form of the Holy Spirit for the men of the Lord to go out and preach this word okay and as you can see us doing so is causing a lot of friction and it's frustrating all right uh, uh, those so-called wise and prudent scholars of this world the likes of Vocab Malone, James White, Abu Kamar. And I was just watching the Elder Apostle Ramlab's video speaking on us, speaking the pure Hebrew. And we believe through faith that we are speaking the pure Hebrew. But we do not claim to be scholars in the Hebrew. Okay? The Lord, according to prophecy, told us that in the latter days he would return to us a pure language now we know that there's steps to it all right it's not like he's gonna wake us up and we're gonna speak fluent hebrew and know every hebrew word and all of these various different things but we would turn to that language because those are the names i mean that's the language in which the true names of the heavenly father and his name will be called on and the heavenly father told moses this is my name forever in my memorial unto all generations. And we believe that we are that remnant that was promised and prophesied to receive the Holy Spirit and return in the latter days. The remnant of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to be heirs to the promise that was given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which that lot and promise fell upon the twelve sons which that offspring is still here in the earth, according to Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. This is the narrative of the Bible, okay? And, um, you know, you can see, and I was watching that video done by Apostle Ramlob, and it just uh, inspired me to go to the book of Luke, you know, and I'm going to read the scripture, and I don't have any set topic. I'm just going to uh, roll and flow in the spirit, and hopefully you all be edified. And it's, it's very interesting to see that, you know, this platform, this, this great awakening is causing such a fuss among, all right, uh, uh, these people, you know. Here it is, for years you've had people claiming that they are the Jews, they're the Israelites, they're this, they're that, speaking their form of Hebrew, calling on Hashem and Yahweh and all of these various different things. And that was never a problem, all right? But now that, you know, the undesirables of this world, the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American have awakened to the truth and are out preaching and standing for themselves, turning our people to turn from sin, all right? Because pretty much damned if you do and damned if you don't. If you're of the nation of Israel, if you're doing wickedness, you know, they, they say they're tired of you standing on the street corner selling drugs. They're tired of you doing this. They're tired of you doing all of that, all right? Which the things that our people do, all right, are a result of them being taught lies, man. And it's all culminated in sin, which sin leads to death. So we, the true teachers that the Heavenly Father have set up, Lord willing, we're of that number, are going out to tell our people to turn from those things, and then it's another problem. Now it's another problem because we're telling our people to turn from sin. You see, the powers that be have always, 
all right, prided themselves in having control of the mind of the true Israelites. And to see that slipping away, it's really causing a fuss in them. And they seek to overthrow our faith, all right, and to get us to doubt, all right? And we don't doubt. And that's what really frustrates them because we don't need their approval on what the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son is. We don't need their approval on what the true Hebrew is. We don't need their approval of who we really are. We don't need their approval of the breakdown of the scriptures. And they're hurt because for so long they've prided themselves in being the top scholars, the top theologians, and, and they have went to all of these schools. Which, what school did the Messiah go to? Which biblical uh, uh, um, <laughs> school, you know, did, did, did the prophets go to? Okay? The true schooling and the true education is done via the Holy Spirit. And ironically, you know, when they see us, you know, one of their main arguments and one of their main scoffing points is how we look, how we talk. All right? And that shows you their lack of understanding, because when you read First Corinthians, the first chapter, which Lord willing, we can get to that. That is the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to take the undesirables and the things of this world that aren't uh, highly esteemed and put his Holy Spirit in those. OK, so that the victory can be gotten. And that's what's happening. All right. Ultimately. The word to educate or education means to draw out something that's already within you. And for us true believers who have woken up in these latter days, it was always in us. But it just had to be activated. As a matter of fact, I'll start here. In James 1 and 21, it says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluidity and naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls now let's look up this word engrafted okay engrafted that's the true education okay and here it is these these so-called scholars brag on you know how uneducated we are and how dumb we sound and this and that and how our appearance and how we look <laughs> all right but they themselves have paid hundreds and thousands, close to millions of dollars for a so-called education, and they don't know the truth of the Bible, and they don't have the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit can't be bought. It's not something that you can go to a particular school and get. It has to be received from on high, as the scriptures say, the spirit of life from the Heavenly Father entered into them, those souls who were chosen to teach and understand this truth, were chosen from the foundation of the earth for the purpose, all right, of grace. There's a remnant according to grace and election that will return. And that remnant is of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they have the engrafted word. It says, inborn, implanted by nature, implanted by others' instruction. And whose instruction is it implanted by? Is it implanted by the, by the instruction of the Most High God, Yahweh? In Yahweh Shah. Now, there's a scripture in the uh, book of Wisdom of Solomon, all right, that wisdom is with the godly in the womb, okay? As a matter of fact, let me just pull it up here on this computer. Um, I'm not going to pull it up here on the screen, but on this, com on this computer I have in front of me, this is uh, Ecclesiastes 1 and 4, Sirach. 1 and 14, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. You see that? In the womb, that's Sirach 1 and 14. So the true education is to draw out something that is already within you. That's what the word educate means. And they, being high-minded and going to these, like what they, you know, million-dollar schools, in cemetery schools, which, you know, the schools of death, man. They seeing us go out on the highways and the byways and teach this word, it really bothers them. Okay. And they seek to overthrow it by throwing out things of the flesh because that's their only argument. They have to nitpick 
at things like Hebrew. They have to nitpick at, at how we look, okay? But they can't deal with the truth that we're bringing out. They can't go into prophecy. So they have to do things to try to mock us and overthrow our faith, man, which is not going to work. All right? So the engrafted word would be inside of the true believers. Now, this is where I wanted to start. And it's a beautiful thing to behold, but it's annoying. It's bittersweet. This is the straight gate. A part of the straight gate is those who mock the unbelieving, the incredulity, which the Lord told us to fear not and worry not about it. But we're still here in this flesh. All right. So we're going to feel it. It's going to frustrate you. But the beauty of it is there's another side to our story and there's another side to their story. As the scriptures say, woe to you who laugh. OK, now, because later you will be weeping and blessed are you who mourn now, because later you will be laughing and filled with joy. OK, and right now we're in we're in a spirit of heaviness and mourning and crying to the heavenly father to deliver us out of this hell hole. All right, Babylon are great in the various different captivities where we are, because you leave it up to these particular men. OK, Vocab Malone, James White or whoever else it may be, Abu, this world and the power structure that's in rulership would continue. They're not crying for a new heaven and a new earth, which a new heaven and a new earth just simply means because right now we're in Esau's heaven. OK, he has control of the fatness of the earth, but there's a promise given. All right. To Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, that one day under Yahawashai, this world will be in control of the righteous, the Israelites. Okay? So this is Luke chapter 10 and 16. It says, He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. And that's the order. The Most High, His Son, and the elect men that He chose before the foundation of the earth to go out and preach this word. Okay, so that's the order. Okay? And the only place you're going to get the truth is from the men that he sent and that he ordained. It says in the 70, showing you that there were more than 12 disciples. All right? Now, the 12, there is order. The 12 were the heads of the discipleship with King uh, uh, David or Peter being the head of the church, the rock on which the, the Yahweh Shai would build his church. But there were more than 12 disciples. And in essence, we know in spirit, there are 144,000 that were chosen from the foundation of the earth to follow Yahweh Shai, man. All right. It says in the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. And that's true because these very people who were speaking about in these naysayers, they're, they're only doing what they're doing because of the word. The word prophesies that there would be those who would try to frustrate our purpose. All right. And we have to go through it. There's no way around it. Okay. But the beauty of it is they're doing exactly what we said that they were going to do. They're doing exactly what the scripture said that they were going to do. Okay. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven okay which is a similitude because okay? you got a lot of in christianity they teach that satan was actually kicked out of heaven man <laughs> oh boy this is basically speaking of esau being the end of the world all right you can read isaiah the 14th chapter and it tells you how lucifer which means basically the light bearer the elites of this world will be taken out of their power seat. And that's happening starting with this word going out. Okay, they're subject to what we say via the words that are sent from the Most High through His Son, Yahweh Shai, who sits on the right-hand side. As we witness and as we say, so happens on the earth, man. All right, so the, so the 70 were rejoicing because of that. And we rejoice because of that, right? But there's even a deeper meaning to this all. It says... Behold, I give you unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions 
and over all the power of the enemy. All right, because Esau has all of these various different things, these, these tanks, you know, uh, these large institutions where he says the truth comes from and all of that. But us <laughs> in these decrepit the flesh are filled with the Holy Spirit that's going to overcome all of that madness, man. It says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And it takes faith to believe that. It says, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven because you were chosen from the foundation of the earth, man. Okay? That's where ultimately the rejoicing should be, man, that we're even considered, okay, to be a part of that number, that the Lord has even, you know, after all we've done and all we've been through, even, you know, a, a thought, <laughs> that we were worthy to receive this word and gave it to us, man. Verse 21 says, And in that hour, Yahweh shall rejoice in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent. You see that? The truth is hidden from the wise and prudent. You see, and they pride themselves in using big words, sounding eloquent, having the praises of men, looking the part in the flesh. All right. He, but he's hid the spirit from these people, man. Like T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, all of these, these, these so-called pastors and scholars of this world who say that they're the, 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 the anointed. When you look at them, their presentation and the way they speak, you will really believe that they're these loving characters but the inside they're full of dead men's bones man but we come rough rugged put the garment on speaking the the spirit and speaking through the spirit and power of yahweh and people are like ugh but that's how yahweh by shimmy shai wants it you see here it is all of the the, the, the so-called jew can say he has the true hebrew and there's not many videos made about it nobody you don't see vocab malone and all of these various different uh, 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 scholars coming up against them but it's something about our message that has these people moved all right thou has hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes even so father for it seemed good in thy sight <laughs> well let's look up this word babes okay babes He's hid them from the wise and prudent and, and revealed it unto babes, as the scriptures say, out of the mouth of babes. Now, the word for babes in the Greek is neep, nepios. Strong's G, 3516. Napios. Napios. Infant, a little child, a minor, not of age, metaphorically childish untaught unskilled and when they look at us that's what they see let's get this in the book of second corinthians the fourth fourth chapter because that's what they see unlearned what, what where's his letters what school did they go to but they don't understand that the scriptures say the true education would come from on high <laughs> not a a, 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 a a cemetery school Second Corinthians chapter four and three. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You see that it wasn't revealed unto the wise and prudent, in whom the God of this world, okay, Satan controls this world, and Satan has a particular seed on earth that ruled the world, and through that they have hijacked all of the institution of the world. And inserted serpent juice. Okay, whether you go uh, to the school system, okay, whether you go to the inner Hollywood, okay, wherever you go in this world, what you'll find out is that anti Messiah, all right, uh, 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 doctrine is in is 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 in it, man. It has nothing to do with the truth 
of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Even the people who say God and have the Bible in their hands, they're speaking another Messiah. Okay? Because as Paul says, there are God's many and Lord's many. So one could say God and, 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 and speak of the Most High and all, but they're not talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, the savior of the nation of Israel, they're speaking of their own God and their own Messiah who has different attributes that have nothing to do with what's really in this book. And they went to that school and were taught all of those lies. And now that the Holy Spirit has come up on the true believers, all of those lies are being challenged and they don't know what to do. They're trying to fight and they're trying to defend their doctrine, but it's not holding up. It's not making sense. And furthermore, the prophecies are coming to pass. See, they're trying to ignore and act as if nothing that we're saying has any validation. Meanwhile, look at the world. Meanwhile, look at the look at the believers waking up. And they're bothered. OK, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Yahweh who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So the God of this world has got them in a position of pride. Those of our nation who are fighting with them, okay, are basically protecting the image of the beast. They love the image of the beast, which the Lord despises the image of the beast. Okay, the Lord says in the book of Psalms, the 73rd chapter, that when he awakes, he would despise their image. And how has he awoken in the earth? Through his prophets, through the truth, all right, being taught. And now his name, through his only begotten son, is being glorified. And that name was never destroyed. That's one thing they want you to believe when they make these arguments. They don't want you to have faith that the Heavenly Father could return his pure name to you in these latter days, though we can go into the scriptures and find that. Let's, let's just type it in. Now, what did the Lord tell Moses in Exodus 3 and 15? And God said moreover unto Moses, thou shalt say unto them, the children of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, what these Christians have been doing is coming up to particular camps and show me Negro in the Bible. Well, the word Negro wasn't in existence when these things were written. This is a translation. And a lot of these words are transliterations, which aren't even words. So we can go into the scrolls and show, show you Yahweh. We can go into the scriptures and show you that the Israelites will be called by by words. But no, I'm not going to be able to show you the word Negro, Mexican and all of that. Those words weren't in existence back then. Those are the by words that have been put up on the Lord's chosen people via prophecy. But they're so spiritually discerned and, and through that they can't get it. They only know the flesh. They only have a fleshly argument. Nothing is through the spirit. We receive it all through the spirit. Now, right here, even particular Israelite groups wrestle with this. Because they make the argument, there is no way we can know the true name. But what does it say here? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Psalms 135 and 13. Thy name, O Yahweh, endureth forever. And thy memorial, O Lord, unto all generations. And let's type this one in. It's, uh, I believe it's Psalms 45. Let's see here. Name remembered. <laughs> 
Psalms 45 and 17, I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. And see, when you try to take away from the narrative of the Bible, you can get away with these things. But when you follow the narrative of the Bible, we know that Israel will be as the sand of the sea, but a remnant will return and that name will be remembered in that generation, man. And a part of this truth and this great awakening is the names of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Give me one second. Let's see here. All right. So going back to where we were. The second Corinthians four and five, but we preach not ourselves and these guys love, love to boast and, uh, you know, the, which schools they went to their letters and their scholarships and their this and their that. And we we've been a lot of us have been through Esau school system and we didn't learn a damn thing, man. Here it is. I had a master's degree. I had an associates, a bachelor's and a master's and didn't know a damn thing until I saw the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, man, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? So all of these earthly arguments and all of this carnal, you, you don't have the spirit, Jack. And that's what's hurting you. That's why you're wasting your life trying to destroy our setup and to overthrow our faith. Okay? Hold on one second. Shit. Second Corinthians chapter four and five. It says, For we preach not ourselves, but Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, and ourselves your servants for Yahweh Shai's sake. For God, who have commanded the light to shine out of darkness, and we we were in darkness. Okay? We were in some serious darkness, man. And this is all they wanted you to be. They never wanted you to be anything outside of what you were labeled and, 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 and accused as, man. But now light is shining out of that darkness, man. As the scriptures say, the meek would take pleasure in their, in their power, man, in the latter days. Okay? It says, have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. You see that? We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You see that? We have this treasure in these earthen vessels and that's what they can try to attack. That's what they can try to capitalize off of. That's what Esau, all right, that's his claim to fame, being able to draw out cornality, being able to say, look at them. Being able to finance particular things like rap music and thug culture and always point at it and say, look, look at them. They're aggressive. They're hateful. You see? And that's ultimately what it is. The flesh. That's their only uh, argument. That's all they got is the flesh. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body 
the dying of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Okay, we're crucified all day long, man. That the life also of Yahweh Shai might be made manifest in our body, man. Okay. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Yahweh Shai's sake, that the life also of Yahweh Shai might be made manifested in our mortal flesh. So death worketh in us, because we have to catch hell. But life in you, for you who are all receiving this word, man. But the Lord has sent down the Holy Spirit into these earthen vessels, okay, so that we can in these latter days come to the true understanding of this book, man. Okay? 1 Corinthians 1 and 26, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. <laughs> you see? And this is what they pride themselves in. Okay? See, we were taught of the Holy Spirit. Yahawashah, when he came on the scene, he was taught of the Holy Spirit and those wicked scribes and Pharisees who went to these different law schools and all of that, who uh, prided themselves and let letters and all of these, they were being condemned by the Holy Spirit, man, because the scriptures tell you this about Yahweh Shai. Let's get that in Isaiah 11. It's the same with us. Isaiah, the 11th chapter. Oh boy, Isaiah 11 and 1, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, which is the father of David. That's another thing, you Christians come up and we ask you simple questions like, who, who, who's Jesse? Who's this? Who's that? And you don't know. But you're looking at us like, ugh. <laughs> well, your doctrine is ugh, Okay. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. That's the Messiah, man. Yahweh Shai. In the spirit of the Lord. And this is in the Old Testament, man. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Which is the same things that his believers, his followers have received. And where did we receive it from? On high. Remember, the Lord said he would send the comforter. It's one thing these Christians don't understand, man. John, the 14th chapter. And 15, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world, all of Israel, and, and, and including the rest of the heathen nations and Esau, all of them, okay, cannot receive. Even the spirit, so the truth would be something that would not be popular, would not be something everybody would be able to grasp. Because it has to be received through the spirit. The natural man receive it not the things of the spirit. Okay. It's in the book of Romans. You see, what we're coming up against is thousands of years of lies, man. First Corinthians 2 and 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. It's foolish. That a bunch of ragtag so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans could be the children of the Most High God. And in the latter days, stand on their feet as a great army and push this word and repent and come back to the Lord. Although it's written in the scriptures. All right. What did the Lord say? The things that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are truth. The spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the, it comes in the volume of the book. So we could go to various prophecies and show you that, you know what, in the latter days, the Israelites will wake up in great number. Now, it's not about the number, but it's about the power of it.
because the Lord don't want all Israel. Even everybody calling themselves Israelites now, the Lord don't want them all. It's about the elect, the remnant that will return to him in sincerity and truth. Okay? Although that's written in the Holy Scriptures in various places, they can't receive it. Here it is. The Scriptures told you in various places that in the latter days, the spirit of life from on high would enter into the servants, man. They would call themselves by the name of Jacob. They would return to the Most High God, Yahweh. They would subscribe to the name of Israel. But when it happens, they can't receive it. Why? Because they aren't educated. Why? Because the God of this world have blinded their minds so that they can't receive the truth. Because the God of this world wants this setup to continue. When you talk to a Christian about the concept of the, the, the kingdom of heaven and, and what it entails, they don't know. They don't know that the Lord's elect will rule and have the laws written on their inward parts. They don't talk about that. They want to talk about this false misconception of love and all of these various different things that this world teach. And look at this world. Where has love gotten this world? Look at the love of this world. It has allowed people to live lifestyles that have destroyed their, them, man, and the earth. Love should not allow you to destroy yourself, man. Love corrects evil and behavior that destroys you. And this is what we're out telling our people, but for some reason, it's a problem. Here it is. You can't do a video. Now, anybody else can do a video against BLM. But if we do one, and warning our people not to follow it, they take the video down. Here it is, Walter Payton's son, Amo, does a video against BLM, and it's up forever and ever and ever. I do one, and it's gone, taken down. Hate speech, flagged. And we're getting tired of this shit, man. This is why we, we're ready for the next glory. We're tired of YouTube. OK, we're tired of, 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 of uh, uh, you know, going out preaching to you people. We want the elect to be sealed in the next glory to come, man. Wherein death can be overcome. We're tired of seeing death. We're tired of this flesh. But the natural man receive it, not the things of the spirit of God. Here it is. This system wants to keep you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans sleep. <laughs> boy, oh boy. But the natural man receive it, not the spirit, not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can they know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. I thought only God can judge you. Yet he himself is judged of no man because their righteousness is of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, according to Isaiah, the 54th chapter or the 57th chapter, 54th chapter and 17. No weapon that is formed against us will prosper and every tongue that riseth itself against the knowledge of the Lord shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and their righteousness is of him. So you people don't got a damn thing to say to us because you want the image of the beast to continue. <laughs> oh, man, For who have known the mind of the Lord and those chariots are all over the place, man. <laughs> who have known the mind of the Lord that they may, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of a Mashiach because we were with him from the beginning. Okay. So the, 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 the spirit of the Lord. Is upon us. Just like the spirit of the most high guy. Yahweh was upon Yahweh Shai. And he made him of quick understanding. It was in him. You see. <laughs> and the Lord has hidden. All of these things. Okay. From the wise and prudent man. Clearly, Revelation 11 
and 11 says, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood up on their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. Okay. We didn't, it didn't say they went to a cemetery school or they were taught by a uh, uh, vocab Malone or they was listening to the, and plantation Christianity is the same thing that was used to enslave and destroy us. And you're wondering why we're turning from it. And I guarantee you this precepts with Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, man. Bam. The same breath that was breathing to Adam, the same breath. All right. That was breathed unto Abraham has been breathed unto us, man. And we're, we're, we're standing on our feet, man. Verse 10, Ezekiel 37 and 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up on their feet an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts, man. So as we prophesy, man, okay, the breath it's coming unto the dry bones, man. And we're overcoming death, okay? Which all of the institutions of this world, all of the doctrines of this world, all of the philosophies of this world, all right, are ultimately of death, man. So the Lord has hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes, okay? We'll get one more and roll out. Isaiah chapter 29 and 18. In that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The meek also shall increase their joy in Yahweh and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel, man. And going back to what I was reading in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, not many noble are called, but the Lord have chosen the base things of this world and the things that are foolish, the things that are not to confound the things that are, man. You see that? Verse 20, for the, the terrible one is brought to naught and the scorner is consumed and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. And that's all you, you people are doing. You're watching for iniquity. You're trying to catch us up in our words. You're trying to overthrow what is, and you're failing miserably. That make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing or not. And this is your whole platform in a nutshell, vocab Malone. You're trying to lay a snare. You're trying to get us linked to terrorists. You're trying to turn aside the, 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 the just for a thing of naught. Therefore, thus saith the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall now not be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale, meaning we wouldn't be in that timid state. We would stand on our feet and preach this word in sincerity and truth, man. And the things that we preach are not going to be accepted by the world because the spirit of truth is not going to be accepted. Or understood, it's going to be foolishness unto them. But when he seeth his children, the work of mine hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify the name of the Holy One of Jacob and fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. And this is what's happening okay in the earth <laughs> and you people are hurt okay you wanted us to stay in that box you wanted us to stay in darkness but the heavenly father had other plans man all praise to Yahweh double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone peace and salutations to the elect shalom